Hello, welcome to Coffee and a Book. My name is William Hemsworth. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode. Pleased to have my guest. My guest at this time is Rob Hiller. He's the CEO of Performance Solutions MN. He's nationally known for his expertise in talent selection, executive coaching, team development, sales, and leadership building. He was the CEO of a high-tech company, Minnesota Business Systems, where he developed a passion for acquiring talent and solving problems that executives face. He's assessed more than 24,000 people in the past 25 years. He's a business graduate of St. Olaf College, and he and his wife have three adult children and live in Minnesota. Rob, how are you doing this morning? Well, good. It's great to be with you as you launch this incredible, fun uh, podcast. I, I'm so happy that you're doing it. Well, I thank you for those kind words, and it's, it's just a joy to talk with authors on a weekly basis, such as yourself about their stories, about their work, and the impact that it's uh, making. So I thank you so much for taking the time to come on. <laughs> Great to be here. So your book, uh, The Power of Th- it's the power of Three, just released by Tyndale on January 4th. So what, Rob, what is The Power of Three? Well, The Power of Three is something that I have actually experienced in a great <laughs> manner um, over my life. I, you know, we all have ups and downs, but I especially experienced this uh, three years ago in 2017, or uh, yeah, three plus years ago, when I went to the club, I did some planks, and all of a sudden, I just I, when I went down on my plank, I discovered, wow, there's pain here, bad pain. And so that brought up the idea that maybe I should try it again and again. And so I did. And I said, I need help. And so I went to the Fairview system, which is uh, uh, the main hospital there. And uh, we we went from there to getting some tests, to quickly determining you have something pretty serious. Mm -hmm. You have cancer, but we think that it's maybe more. So they referred me to Mayo Clinic and went to Mayo Clinic after a week's testing, uh, we sat down with the doctor, uh, hematologist there, and he said, yeah, you not only have one cancer, but you have three. Wow. And he said they're, um, and, and of course, you know, deadly cancers. So I, you know, we were thrown back. And so to get to your question, the power of three was it, the, the whole story and what I've taught for all these 24 years, I actually had to use myself. And the power of three is a, that simple method that anybody can use. And it's basically um, at learning to ask great questions when in anything, and then activate your God-given talents. And then the third part is you need to be an advocate, not only for yourself, but for others. And you need to, in life, connect with faith, family, and friends. I simply kind of call this when I teach, it's a way of life. It's a, and that's probably the best way to describe it, and it works. Great. Now, in your book, you describe your time at Xerox when you started. And you said you, you started describing the final test that you had. And I found it hilarious, but really telling. Can you tell us about this final test that you had at Xerox early in your career? <laughs> <laughs> so remember, I'm a newbie. Uh, I had graduated from college. I'd been out of school working for someone for a year, and now I'm back uh, uh, at this wonderful company. And the one thing that they did is they taught you for six weeks in-house, and then they sent you to Leesburg, Virginia to go to a three-week school. And uh, when uh, your, your job was to know uh, the data, quote, be well-schooled in it. They weren't expecting you to be uh, proficient in everything, but you needed to know the data. So there was five or six of us, I forget the exact amount, uh, but we flew uh, there to Leesburg. And then when we got to the Xerox, uh, Xeroid Center, we called it, we were given a color uh, and some went yellow, some went blue, some went purple, red. And, and then, but before you did that, you walked into this big room and you had to take tests. Uh, it was your comprehension. And if you got 70, I think one and above, uh, 70 or above, something like that, you uh, were still employed by Xerox. And if you did not get that, 
you were um, uh, let go. Um, you were canned, so to speak. <laughs> so um, I remember we lost, to, I think, at least two people that day of the people that came because they didn't know, they didn't score well on this test because they figured if you weren't going to learn that, why should we invest any more in you? And so um, that was uh, quite a deal. Now, one of the themes in, uh, throughout the Power of Three is the importance of establishing connection by asking questions. W why is that so important? <clears throat> well, I, I, I put it this way. If you're married and you'd like to be a good spouse, if you'd like, if you get kids, uh, you mentioned that you have some children, the best way to be a great parent is to learn to ask great questions. Likewise, if you want to be a wonderful coach in business or a wonderful pastor or a wonderful leader, the starting point is to learn to ask great questions. When, when you do that, it changes everything. And um, when I, here I am sitting down at Mayo Clinic, Pam and I are crying because we just learned, oh my gosh, uh, I might not be here and I feel like I have so much more to do. And we uh, went home and I sat in my office and I looked out the window and I said, Lord, I, I just don't know quite what to do, you know, and after we cried for a bit, it became very evident what I should do. And I said, I should do exactly what I've taught for all these years and helped all these people with. And that is what question can I ask myself right now? Because this is a big moment in my life. Yeah. And so I said, what can I do right now to move forward in some form or fashion? Who could I contact? What could I ask for? What do I need? And the beauty is my wife, uh, she's beautiful in research. She immediately took that and started looking up all about these incredible disease, you know, in, a couple more incurable diseases uh, that I had in cancer. And we began down that path. <clears throat> and sometimes it was a hourly thing. What's the next best thing that I can do so that I move forward and not wallow in something that I have no control over. The first question I asked was, why is this happening to me? Bad question, bad question. Why questions make you a victim and they take you down a path that your emotions go up and down. And so one of the great advantages of uh, asking questions is you redirect your emotions towards something that can be much more positive. Like I say, we don't say that, that you want to deny them. But what we say is you can move forward to a better place to manage those ups and downs of all the neurochemicals to trying to talk to themselves and getting confused. When you ask a question, it stops that and allows the neurochemicals in your brain <clears throat> and within your system to talk. <laughs> and that's what I did. All right, so instead of the why me questions, what type of questions should we ask <clears throat> ourselves to get us going? Well, um, the, the most important question is how and what, and sometimes where. How and what questions allow uh, people to come up with different answers or different directions and allow them to make better decisions. Um, if you have children or if you're anyone in your audience does, you know what it's like when a kid comes up and uh, they say, why can't I go to the store? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Well, of course, when I was younger, I, did, I wasn't very good at this. I didn't handle things. It's because I said so. And at some point, sometimes you need to explain that it's better to take the time to say, what is it that you really want to do? Let's take it from a kid's standpoint. <clears throat> he comes home with a bad report card. Mm -hmm. um, I remember in my early years, I would sit there and say, what in the heck are you doing? 
<laughs> wrong way. Why did this happen? Bad question. Yeah, I'm guilty. And I learned over the course of the years to say, uh, son, daughter, what is it that you think occurred here that led to your getting a D? Or something on that. How do you think that you can improve that rather than me telling them? By the way, no difference in business and in coaching or in a relationship with a spouse. Now, during your, can your cancer treatments, you document how painful they were. And then you talk about a nurse and a doctor who used their talents to help things get turned around. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Oh, uh, it was, uh, as I think about it, I, I, I still, uh, the emotions are, even all these years later, still uh, there. Sure. I have now had uh, my first cancer treatment. I went through about five months of chemotherapy. And um, uh, when I got started at uh, seven in the morning and ended at five, roughly five, 10 at night, gosh, that was all chemotherapy. I, and it, it, a lot of times you just don't know. And of course I would right now, well, I could watch a movie, I could sleep, I could do whatever. I would think about other things. But with that first uh, douse of chemicals, I, it affected me greatly and the subsequent uh, did. And so I ended up in the hospital. I was there for about a week and I was uh, uh, not doing well. They couldn't figure out what to do with me. And remember, these are serious cancers. Mm -hmm. This is not one thing. This is 10 hours of chemo and uh, trial drug that they were giving me. And, uh, Pam, my wife, could see that I was starting to drift. Pretty good word for it. Uh, she apparently saw that uh, my will to live was going away. Mm. She became very concerned. That I was up on the eighth floor of the oncology uh, ward, and <laughs> this nurse walked by, and she went out and kind of almost grabbed her, and her name was Susan. She said, Susan, um, I, I, I think my husband has died. Um, I, I, he is losing the will and we need help now. We've been here for X period of time. And she went and she said, I'm an oncology nurse. I've been here for about 30 years. I'm gonna go uh, get some help. You just sit down and wait and we'll get this figured out. She went and got two doctors there. And the second doctor was an oncologist, came in and said, he did an analysis, looked at everything, and he said, look, here's what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a Claritin. And so, uh, Susan, could you go get it? She went and got a Claritin. And lo and behold, he came, as she came back, he said, we'll know if this works in about two to three hours. Within about two and a half hours, I got it. And wow. I started to get better. And this was Claritin. Uh, who knows why that works? But I guess if you're in oncology, you don't know everything, but you probably get a tricks of the trade type thing. Right. And that got me back uh, on my feet. That all began from asking the right question, stating and asking for help. And secondly, to the third point of, the, of this triangle, which is really important to talk about the triangle, which is advocate. We found an advocate that helped change my life. Yeah. Susan made a difference. Absolutely amazing. Wow, Claritin of all things. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> In your book, you talk about communication quite a bit. How can we as leaders improve our communication processes? <clears throat> well, I, I always uh, say that, um, it, you know, there's a triangle that the power three is built on. Right. And the power, these triangles are not like, this is just a nuance. And uh, the, it, I just happened to come up with this. This is something that's worked for 2000 years. The pyramids were built with a triangle. Uh, if you drove across a bridge this morning, you drove over a triangle. 
because that's what holds it up. The triangle is the strongest shape in trigonometry. And there's a reason for that. It's used in trusses, it's used in roofs, uh, it's used in uh, joists. And um, of course, the most important in Christianity, the, tr the Trinity is right. a triangle, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when you uh, employ all three of these, asking the right questions, activating your God-given gifts and being an advocate, which is we talk a lot about how to do that in that book, but that's that's the total key, uh, William, that, it, that changes things. And the reason I wrote the book is because most people don't do that. And you, you build relationships when you do all three of these. When you're in your natural talent and you know what that is and you activate it, oh my gosh, everything's so much better. It's like getting in the right job. If you've been in a, in a bad job or something, you understand that. I always say it's kind of funny. Um, the power three is like uh, it handles adversity for large and small ones. Whether you got a kid that's rogue, whether you got a bad relationship, a lousy boss, a career that's off track, um, or whatever isn't going right, or you don't have a job right now because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It all relates uh, to the ability to take those three and put them together. And that's um, what I, that's why I wrote the book because anybody can do this and it worked for me and it's worked for thousands and thousands of others. Now in your book, you talk a lot, like you just mentioned it about activating your God given talents. Can you give us some tips, um, maybe on how we can do that on people that may be struggling? Well, um, it, Understand in uh, evaluating all these people over all the years, uh, I, uh, that's been a huge part because if you're not in the right job or you're doing something that's, that you really kind of struggle at, you'd have to ask yourself, is this what God wants me to do? And is this the right set of talents that he's given me? I will say, what things come naturally to you? What is just like rolls off, or, or with, when you're the friend and they say, how did you do that so easy? You came up with that answer. Or you do this so simple. Um, it could be in sports. It could be in the way you think or the way you act or the way you treat with people. But man, I'll tell you, it, it's, it's uh, crazy when you discover what comes natural. Where do you get your best results? And then you focus on that and get out of the things that you don't do well. That is incredible. So I'd say those are the first two keys. And I go into, I've got about six things yeah. that you go through and you look at. And by the way, that has a lot to do with your purpose in life. When, you, when you're doing what God gave you to do, it's like you always hear the expression, I never worked a day in my life once right. I find out what I love to do. Well, that's related to your talent because if you don't have talent in that area, <clears throat> it's a it's a struggle. It's tough. Right. Absolutely. Now you also talk about you know the importance of having a mentor, and you also talk about advocates. Can you describe for us the difference between a mentor and an advocate? Well, I, I <clears throat> mentor uh, could be an advocate, mm -hmm. um, but an advocate could just be a friend or someone at work that you know. I'll tell you what, uh, most people don't develop a lot of relationships once they get heavily involved in at work. They are so busy, they're working bad now with email, you know, at eight o'clock at night, you're answering emails and you're doing that. They forget about um, taking the time to be an advocate for others and also develop an advocate. And they forget to connect with your faith, family, and friends. They become way over here. Mm -hmm. So here's a great short story. I did a three-week challenge with 25 leaders. And they had to record. Yeah, I gave them one thing each week. And they had to record how they did with that on a scale of one to five. Five, they did great. And four, they did, you know, better. Three, it's average. And, that. and at the end of the three weeks, so they recorded every week how they did on these areas. And at the end of the three weeks, I'm just going to say something on the neighborhood of 90, 
five plus percent said that just going through and doing the power three, but remember they were getting specifics on how to do it, mm -hmm. which are in the book. Absolutely. They said their life improved a lot. And specifically, they actually took time to start to develop advocates. And they said, it was like the light turned on. And they said, why haven't I done this? And I give some you know, specifics on what to do and how to do it. But, um, and just how about just like reconnecting with your faith? And maybe, you know, one of the, your adversity, your challenges is, you know, maybe you haven't been doing that for a while. Uh, maybe you and God just uh, aren't uh, together the way uh, maybe you'd, uh, it used to be, or it's never been. Well, here's mm -hmm. a chance to, to do that. Great. Now, sometimes when we active, sometimes when we're look, seeking what we should be doing in life, you know, fear pops up and fear keeps so many of us from pursuing our passions. How does fear do that? Well, fear uh, activates some very negative chemicals in our uh, whole system. Uh, they always say, well, uh, your brain is the, yeah, the brain is the key because <clears throat> it's producing dopamine or cortisol, for, which is a bad, a bad one, right. or an extra amount of adrenaline, or, um, you know, there's wonderful chemicals out there, but just without getting too technical, mm -hmm. when, when you're in a negative state, you don't make good decisions. One of the reasons that I, I teach, and I've got charts and uh, questions, how, about, how do you ask good questions? I have a thing called DIP, D-I-P, mm -hmm. uh, that is all about discovery, innovative, um, type questions and and, the, and proactive ones and there's charts in the book and how to do all this. But when you go down a bad path, you're, you don't make good decisions. Uh, you also say things that you wish you wouldn't said. So the key is beginning again, you're asking good questions, acknowledges the feelings, <clears throat> but allows to give you time to go down a different path by asking better questions. And when you do that, um, life just becomes so much easier and you don't have to maybe do as many regrets. Now, Rob, how, how did the power of three, how did the book come about? I know you, before we started recording, mm -hmm. you talked about a great story. Can you touch on that for a moment? Well, I, there's, a, there's actually so many, but sure. um, I, I literally, after uh, the last uh, chemo, my, my goal was to make it to my son's wedding, which was October or uh, September 23rd. <clears throat> my last chemo uh, got done and I had to wait uh, a week and plus and then go get my final PET scan. I knew if that PET scan, which was in September, um, showed that I had still cancer, that I couldn't go. Because I was, I, I was COVID like walk, uh, locked up for a long time because I couldn't go out and do things because I had no immune system. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to go to the uh, wedding. And when I, he put the picture up on, on the screen, the doctor and said, here's where you were with all the red in my stomach, which is in down my throat, which was cancer. And here's where you are today. And he, he puts it up and he's like giddy, he's happy. He's like almost skipping oncologists. Don't do that, by the way. Right. They're more measured and all that. And I'd never seen this in him. He said, and I said, but there's no red. And he looked at me and he said, you're right. You have no cancer. And I said, so I can go to the wedding? He said, yes, you can. And so that was one of many. And that led me to speak twice to a group of leaders, one down in Phoenix, and then another, uh, I was asked uh, to speak at St. Olaf College to my class. And the, at the end of the 30 minutes, the men would come up crying. And I just said, um, I wondered at first, like, did I do a, you know, not a good job? Or what, what? And then I saw this guy at St. Olaf. He was in my corridor. I knew him. He was a doctor, orthopedic guy. He walks up and I said, Dr. Tom. And he said, and he had tears in his eyes, he was wiping them away. And he said, you're, 
your message of the power of three needs to be told all over. This is powerful. And he said, please do it. And that gave me the permission to start writing. And that was the beginning of that journey. Wow. Absolutely amazing. I know it's only been a couple of days. The, the book came out January 4th. What has been the response so far? Well, from, um, you know, I because it's so new, I mm-hmm. don't know all the details, but I can just tell you that people that have uh, gotten a, a, a few people got some copies ahead of time because Tyndale, you know, allows that. Mm-hmm. Um, but one particular CEO that got it called me this past Saturday and was basically almost in tears saying how much the book meant to him. He's going through a tough time and he has a lot of people that work for him. And uh, he just said, this was so meaningful. He said, I think that this book can be a classic. He said, it's good for anybody. And it doesn't make any difference if you're in business or not in business. But he said, I'm good. I'm going to send some uh, books to you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe this. And all I want you to do, so I'm sending them to your office and I'm, I want you to autograph them. I'll tell you what, kind of who the people are. And then would you send them back to me? And I thought, thinking, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. I, not that, not that, you know what? It, 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 it's not about me. It's about them. Mm-hmm. It's about helping some people. So I got the books apparently last night. My Pam found them this morning and brought them in. And so I have to, you know, sign the books for these particular individuals that are going. And, uh, uh, and so anyway, it's a way of life. And uh, my hope is that every listener will get the message and then share it with others. Because that's how apparently we do it these days. Mm-hmm. It has to be shared via media, etc. But I think they will be blessed. I definitely think so. I know I was blessed by the book. It's good for business, your personal life. I mean, pretty much whatever you're doing, it's you can right. apply the power of three to any situation. So do you have any words of wisdom for our listeners uh, before I let you go to enjoy the rest of your day? Well, I, I can just uh, tell you that um, I know that in many ways, my facing death, made me alive again. And it's not often in life you get a second chance at life. And I know this is what kept me going for five months. When I was going through these all day chemotherapy treatments and had to be kind of locked up and I'd get out occasionally. And it was was not fun, but I would, I know that if I could do that in that situation, whatever's your adversity or whatever's going on, or you just want to get better, it will help you immeasurably because it's based on the triangle. And we know ultimately the main triangle of our faith is helps us do that. Where where can our, where can the listeners uh, get the book? Well, um, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, and some of the other uh, you know Christian outlets, I I, I know have it. Um, and then the other place, if you want to learn or uh, get a, take an assessment or get the first chapter, or whatever, is on R O B B Rob Hiller Rob Hiller dot com, and that's with two B's. A lot of people spell Rob R O B. Well, my dad, mom and dad said you got two B's, so that's how it is, and. Uh, uh, I, I, there's a lot of information on the page and some wonderful people have uh, recommended it. Uh, if you're into golf, Tom Lehman, a British Open champion, read it and has a fantastic recommendation about it and many others, by the way, but that should uh, uh, give uh, them some solace. All right, great. Well, I encourage everyone to check out the book and Rob, I thank you so much for taking some time to come on and discuss the power of three and your story. I really appreciate it. Well, bless you in your endeavor and thank you for the opportunity. Well, my pleasure. Thank you.